So disease staging in myeloma is a little bit different than what we do for solid tumors because we're really not measuring the extent of disease spread since it's a bone marrow based disease. What the disease staging has been uh, helping us with, in at least the way it started off with the de resolvement stage was more from a diagnosis standpoint um, where, where the staging system clearly um, told us whether the patient has endorgan damage and what is the disease burden. Uh, it has evolved over time to be more of a risk stratification system. The ISS staging system was fairly simple, used albumin and beta-2 microglobulin to give us a good sense of the outcome for the patients. But it wasn't um, specific enough before it, because it did not include all those uh, prognostic factors in this disease, particularly the genetic prognostic factors, which is a major driving um, factor behind the different outcomes we see in these patients. So the revised ISS staging system incorporated LDH, uh, and the um, chromosome abnormalities like 17P and 414 into the ISS staging system. But even that wasn't enough because we know that there are several other important prognostic factors which have independent impact on the outcomes of these patients. Um, and we also, um, over the time, learned that these different non-overlapping prognostic factors or non-overlapping uh, genomic abnormalities can have an additive impact uh, in terms of their outcome. So a couple of the recent staging systems that have been developed uh, including the second revision of the R2 ISS as well as the Mayo additive staging system. Both of them are built on the concept of adding the uh, adding up the different prognostic poor prognostic factors by giving them a weight or a score. We can actually see if how many of them are present concurrently, uh, what the outcomes could be. And this has nicely in both the systems allowed us to group these patients into roughly about uh, four groups with the very different outcomes in terms of overall survival. So hopefully we will see this being utilized not only from a prognostic standpoint, but also in terms of guiding us uh, with our therapy, particularly with respect to the intensity and duration of therapy, which we know is particularly useful for those patients with high-risk disease.